everybody, I'm Kimberly Liu, and I specialize in integrative live mentoring, helping overachievers to accelerate and thrive through mental fitness, emotional fitness, and physical fitness. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about busting through weight loss plateaus. We talked about exercises to help increase your growth hormone first thing in the morning. And then we spoke about, you know, different lifestyles, eating habits to eat on a healthy, fast-paced lifestyle to stabilize your blood sugar and your hormone levels. Now today we're going to be talking about when you've done all that, you're exercising right, you're eating right, and you're still not seeing the results that you're looking for, what do you do then? And I've brought my beautiful friend. Now I love this man. I met him at, he was speaking at a Tony Robbins event, and I fell in love with you, your message, you know, your, your passion for life and fitness. Thank Why you. don't you explain a little bit about what you do, who you are? So, okay, I'm going to introduce it. This is Brian Bradley from Egoscue. Tell me a little bit about who you are, what's the method behind the madness, why are you here? Well, first of all, with an introduction like that, you know today is going to be unbelievable. That's so right. Thank you so much. It's, uh, she's uh, not lying. The message that we're going to give you today is all about posture pain performance, mm -hmm. and it's really going to take you to the next level of where your body's kind of plateaued right now. Even if you're just starting or you're two years into looking for your ideal body weight, the way you look at yourself, your self-esteem, whatever you're trying to build, whatever you're trying to get yourself mm -hmm. around, in fact, if somebody's in chronic pain and you're in search of a way out of that, that's what we're going to touch upon today. I so love it. luckily 30 years ago, I and mean, I blamed it on luck before, but I think the universe kind of drove me toward what they call the Agoscu method. And that's where I've been for the last 30 years. I've had mm -hmm. the privilege of working side by side with a gentleman named Pete Agoscu, who came out of Vietnam in the early 70s mm -hmm. with all these injuries to his left hip, his left hip, his left knee area, left low back. And when the docs finally said, we think it might be in your head. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if this is true or not, but I think he flipped the guy's desk over because he was an angry <laughs> Marine at that time. And the method was born at that point because he picked up Gray's Anatomy and started saying, well, what if the body was supposed to function differently? Why not take my body to the next level? Right. So you think about those things, what if and why not? And I'm curious, and you look at those three phrases, and many of your customer base that's sitting out here is, or the followers are saying to themselves, well, I'm curious. I'm working out seven days a week, it feels like eight. Yep. I'm eating the least amount of food that I think my body can live on. The tabloids are telling me I'm fat. That's right. And uh, that, back pain that, is normal. Doesn't that suck though? I'm telling you right now. It sucks. Yeah, and the doctors too, they don't, sometimes they don't know what they're talking about. Well, let's, um, let's be I nice interrupted to those. You, no, no, you didn't. And let's be nice to the doctors because you think about what they did is they've gone, and I came from a medical family, you know, doctors, nurses, all that. And right. they, they really are healers. Right who get caught up in a system. Thank you for that, yes. And the failure of the human body is, when they call it the failure of the human body versus asking a better question. Yes. What's this person's body trying to tell me right. without a blood test and with this, how about we just talk to the customer and say, what do you think is actually going on? You know, because I went through this myself. You know, I used to weigh 200 pounds. I was eating perfectly. I was, uh, I was exercising two hours a day, nothing. And then I attracted this autoimmune disorder. $50,000 later, seven, you know, two, two CT scans, all of these things, and my body was just breaking down. Now, you know, a lot of times what happens is that the body's talking to you, Yes. but people don't know how to listen to it anymore. You know, animals, I've never seen an animal in the wild that has anxiety or anything like that. Well, think about what you just, t today's environment, if you're, if you're living today, which I'm sure you are because you're watching this, <laughs> you, have a, you have a lymphatic issue. Yes. Automatically, you should assume that yes. because we spend so much time sitting and a lot of people say sitting is the new smoking yep. versus realizing that the sitting is not going anywhere. So we better adopt a different mentality, which why don't we say sitting is a sport right. and you would never enter a sport without training for it. So if we're going to sit for the next however many minutes just sitting here, getting this information out, our body, you would think that it's shutting down. Right. Well, I trained my body last night to prep for today's sitting. And I will do something this afternoon to prep for tomorrow. Got so it. it's like brushing and flossing your teeth to stay away from the dentist. Right. Only brush and floss the teeth you wanna keep or you're gonna end up spending $50,000 on all kinds of work like what you did. So right. the gift of what you had, the gift mm -hmm. of and autoimmune it is a gift. disorder. Yes. It is a gift. Because let me tell you something, I'm a firm believer that life happens for you, not to you. Awesome. Because this thing has happened, I've been able to help so many people. It was frustrating in the beginning, but realize when you're having these things going on, it's for you. It's not, it's not to you, but go ahead. And that's it. So let me ask you a question. Hmm. What psychological, emotional 
switch did you turn on or turn around to actually adopt that mentality? Like you know what, what, it took a what lot. was the day? You know, I always tell people I was given the gift of desperation. And people say, well, what the hell is that? You know, and for me, I, it brought me to my knees. You know, my lifestyle, I suffered from addiction. I suffered from a, an abusive childhood. And we're going to be talking about that later. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are suffering from a lot of different things. And for me, it was like I had to hit my knees and I just hit rock bottom. And I was like finally given the gift of desperation where I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and I'm gonna figure this out because no matter what, I have my kid, right? She's my love, she's my life, she's my purpose. And I am a single mom. And so if something happens to me, she's screwed. So I wanted to make sure like she is taken care of. I, you know, she is my love, my life. And finally I was like, okay, what, what is this gift? Because there's always a gift in something, and I've known this, you know, I've been in personal development. I've been listening to Tony Robbins since I was 18 years old. I quit smoking, I used to smoke three packs of cigarettes a day. I was severely addicted to all different kinds of drugs and things like that. I completely changed my life. And then, and then now, it's like, okay, what, why? But I get to help so many people for it. Yeah, and you think about that, and you, you know, <clears throat> we all, those of us that have children, you, you've never loved anything more than your child, right? Nothing. It's one of those unconditional love things. And, right. And even though when they're 13 and 14, you want to kill them, and they uh, not <laughs> I want to kill them sometimes when exactly. she's eight. <laughs> <laughs> she's only eight. Wow, she's six six hour head, six uh, year oh, head she start. Like an indigo child or something, exactly. very sensitive, but very what do they call them? Gifted children? Yeah, they're gifted. <laughs> and the gift of upsetting mom half the time. Yeah. What we want to think about is is just somebody waking up in the morning and they're lethargic, their body aches. Yep. They're it's almost like they're moving almost like a dried mud mixed with molasses in their body. Yep. And so, look, people come to us because they have chronic pain. Yep. Back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. We'll give you some exercises you can try out, but we all know what Yoda said about trying, so just do it, like <laughs> Nike says. We have to do it. And I promise you, you put 30 days into those exercises, That's it'll right. be a game changer. Now, the, the bonus track to that is right. that you're going to affect what you found, which is the autoimmune dis dysfunction that you had going right. on was your body's emotional and physical response exactly to your lymph system not working. And what I love about the lymph word is that when you spell it out, lymphatic, a lot of people say to us, you know, I just, I lose weight here, 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 but I never lose weight here and in my abdominal region, why is that? Right. And men hide it because they hold it around their rib cage, their abdominal, and they go, oh, right. I look really good. And, and then we say, well, you could probably do this. And once they get past themselves, yeah, yeah. they really adopt the mentality that if they, if they moved more efficiently and more correctly, meaning that every time your heel hit the ground, yep. it works as a shock absorbing, a positive shock absorbing ground reaction to your body. Mm -hmm. So it wakes up your glute, your hamstring, your mid back, and you've done nothing but walk right. as long as you have a normal heel strike. So a lot of people could get up and walk around their room barefoot right now and feel well, my left foot is hitting the ground on the heel, my right one's hitting kind of midfoot, and then they look at themselves in the mirror in the least amount of clothing possible, shut the drapes, of course, and you're looking in the mirror and you see, wow, I have kind of a, a baggage growth over here that is two inches wider on the side that I don't get the heel strike. Right. Because that lymph flow, and the word lymphatic has P-H-A-T right in the middle, fat. But the tabloids are telling us F-A-T, why are you fat? You're fat, you're fat, you're fat. And at Agoski, we look at this and say, okay, we're not gonna say you're toxic, right? but you're holding on to byproducts and metabolic waste because your body and your fat being an organ, your fat is an organ, right. and it's trying to protect you from these toxins, so it holds on to the fat. You're working out more and actually becoming heavier and more frustrated That's and exactly more toxic. It. And let me tell you something. I noticed too, because a lot of stress levels, what do you think about this? You know, I always often refer to the, the adrenals, but it's that fight or flight survival mode. When we're in survival mode, your ass has already been kicked, okay? And the thing is, and then you're gonna, you're gonna put uh, two hours of exercise on top of it, your body is gonna break down. So what happens is we start to hold on to weight in the middle. Yes. You go into a fight or flight mode because the body needs that quick energy to get you going, to, to make sure that you can last throughout the day. So again, what do we do in order to get the body, get that central nervous system to calm down? And I know you have a beautiful answer for that, but I'm so excited that you're talking about this. Well, remember, we, I have the luxury of being around a lot of high-level professional athletes, yep. and they're fun. Yep. But I want their parents, because yeah. at that age group, when we start, I'm 51, so I start looking at this going, when they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, yep. 
they're looking to go, well, I wish the rest of my life would be better when I get that age, and we start to talk about compelling futures, you better start adding a cumulative effect every year and every day by doing something. So even the three simple things, we'll do four, okay. because we're gonna do that one. Oh, I love yeah, that one. Yeah, Ooh, the greatest abdominal one. exercise ever. Yes. I gave it to some guy in the gym yesterday because he saw me doing some stuff with these vipers on the ground, and he's like, what are you training for? And I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, you train so differently than everybody else. I'm, well, I play table tennis, and. I train for life. You know, it's more of you want to be prepared to do something. Like I told you, we just came back from Laguna Seca Raceway, and if you're up there around these turns and you're mm -hmm. doing, say, a, just simple, a, 100 miles an hour, you're hitting the brakes and then cutting the car to the right, right, your body does what? It shifts this direction. The seat holds you a little bit, but all these internal organs are moving with That's you. Right. If your stability in your body is compromised in any way, meaning your pelvis is off, mm -hmm. then your body's like this loose, kind of scarecrow whipping around versus my body's a unit and it moves and it returns and it moves and it returns. So my efficiency, I don't get tired, I'm like, my conditioning is there. So when we start talking today about stand up, look in the mirror, where's your body weight left to right with your eyes closed, those are little tests that we're gonna have people do in the morning to let them know, here's what you can expect today. Right. If you're unbalanced, we're gonna give you some exercises to say, well, what if I balance myself, what type of day is there ahead of me? Mm -hmm. Then when you're coaching them through what to eat and how to think and how to change their mind and not by you telling them, but you, you teaching them. Remember, it's the uh, don't teach, uh, you're gonna teach the man to well, fish you know, versus giving them the pe fish. People always say, Kim, are you a coach? And I say, no, I'm a mentor. And they say, well, what's the difference? And I say, well, coach tells you what to do. A mentor helps you figure it out for yourself. And that's what, I, that's what I love about your philosophy, and that's what I love about my philosophy. I think we match really well. Yeah. But yeah, we have to teach you how to do this because we're not gonna be there in your living room. We're not gonna be there you know, when you're late at night. There, what are you gonna do for yourself in order to enhance your life, accelerate and grow it? But I love that. Especially with your line of thinking, and this probably mm -hmm. be better coming from you because um, I don't wanna get a hashtag, but it'll be <laughs> out every <laughs> um, When we start talking about having someone stand in front of their mirror again, mm -hmm drapes clothes completely naked in their yep. house. They're in their comfort zone, so yep. they're, and they look in the mirror and they say, I approve. The but a first, lot of people aren't gonna say that. No, they'll say it. But then the they little creeper comes into their, uh, into their yeah, ear yeah. and says, no you don't. But and then I, I approve, I have to say no something you don't. Here. I have to say something, no, people always say, Kim, do affirmations work? And I say, yeah, affirmations absolutely work if you believe them, but if not, they're just gonna send you spiraling. You're gonna, they're, your body knows the difference, and when you're lying to your body, it goes weak. So, and I love Tony Robbins, what he says, ask yourself why questions. Why do I approve? Why am I gonna sit in the mirror? Why is, what is good about my body already? Because then the brain loves to love solve it. problems, you know? And so it's like, what can we do to ask ourselves positive why questions? So now when we say the affirmation, your body actually agrees with that. Or how about, is it, and it goes to anything. So my yep. son plays academy soccer. He comes off the soccer field, okay. has tough English coaches, and they're pushing him to the next level because right. he wants to play in Europe and all this other stuff. And right. he has my genetics. So I have no idea whether that's going to happen or not. But well, wait a second. I've seen you on, okay, so I've been, I've been stalking <laughs> this guy. I've been watching him move. You move so beautifully and gracefully. I cannot believe the, the amount of grace that you use. On your, and the on fun your thing is, is I'm getting better as I get older. And yeah. this is not one of those, oh, look at me. No, that's not it be an example for what you're teaching. That's exactly it. So you have to be able to do, and I posted this the other day, if you can't do what you're asking your customer to do, yeah. then why are you giving it to them? So exactly. you, our people have to be as functional as possible in all of our clinics around the country or around the world, and then we ask them to say, if you're gonna ask your client to bend over and touch their toes and hinge at their hip versus reach from their back, right. you, be able to, you have to show them how this works, as 80% of the population is yeah. visual. So my son leaves the field one day and he says, well, you know, I, I could have done that kick better, and you know, I did that right in front of coach, and he was going down this negative road, and I said, stop for a second. I said, what if we redid this whole conversation? Okay, Tony Robbins, <laughs> go ahead. And I said, hold on, hold on, oh, you know how they are, 17, yep. right? What if you started out with the positive? What did you do? Give me three things. Yep. Dude, I launched this ball where Mason was able to head this in, blah, 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 I came down the left side, nobody could do this, I lost the ball, then went back and stole out of this kid. There you go. And I said, as soon as you said that, do you even want to talk about the negatives? He said, not really. He said, start off with a positive, so that's a metaphor for you every morning. Get up, look in the mirror, and find one thing that you approve of. Yep. It doesn't have to be how you look, but it could be what you did yesterday with your children, or to your husband, or wife, or whatever, or your business. What did you do to contribute that's gonna make your life more of a gift, rather than, right. let me self-loathe, let me self-judge. Right. 
The one I also love too, like with women, we're constantly tearing our bodies apart. And I wrote a 90 day fitness journal and it really talks about focus on what's working. What's working with your body? You may not like the way your hips look, but is your heart beating? Are your lungs breathing? Focus on the positive things in your body to help you start to like, if you're focusing on what's working, you're gonna get more of what's working. You know, I used to work with foster children and I, you know, it was, it was very interesting, it was very challenging. I'll tell you, it was the most challenging year of my life. But I, you know, a lot of times they would resist me with working out. And I would say, I would focus, the, you know, unfortunately, I would focus on the ones who were wanting to do the work because then the other ones who were complaining about it would do it. So I would focus on the ones who wanted to do yeah. the work. And then examples. they were examples and I would praise them and I would build them up and these other, you know, girls would be like, well, wait, what about me? And so they would complain the whole way, but at least they did the exercises. So again, focus on what's working, you'll get more of what's working. Speaking of that, like yeah. you and I were speaking before about, um, you know, your, your history and, and, I, and I find it honestly authentic and motivating and moving because, listen, when I say luckily, I didn't come from a right. background where I was addicted or anything like that. Now, right. everybody has their own addiction, so I was addicted to speed in the sense of mountain bikes and right. cars and all that stuff, which has its own dangers. You mess up one of those and your life's over. Screwed, right? So, but <laughs> in your, what you were talking about before, you imagine how many people are out there with these chronic pain symptoms and we look at the opioid crisis. And yes. I know that we had talked about this Big before. Time. It's, now it's become a government situation where they're going, well, now we're gonna sue this person and we think they did this but if we can give people a way out of these little injuries, yeah. so when somebody sprains their ankle, we don't give them 60 to 90 pills to take. Right. We say, the ankle sprained, that's going to affect the knee. And you remember the song, yep. the tibia is connected <laughs> to the knee, the femur is connected to the hip. And I know yep. if everybody sings along, we're gonna have some kumbaya going, but uh -huh. the hip bone's connected to this. Yeah. And if we could just adopt that and, and make some assumptions. Right. When you sprain your little ankle, right. instantly the hip on that side says, I better shut down movement right. to protect the ankle. So the nervous system saying, okay, we have a problem, let's shut down this circuit breaker. Right. A great physical therapist is gonna get a hold of you, they're gonna help your ankle and you're gonna be back to normal. Yeah, but. But mm -hmm. if the circuit breaker isn't yeah. turned back on, which is what we talked about at that event, yeah. there's a muscle in here that number to, one. That central nervous system That is, is correct. Okay, so we use muscles to change bones and once the bone alignment changes, then the brain and the central nervous system mm -hmm. can normalize. And then exactly. it becomes a positive pattern. Yes. And once you adopt a little bit of a habit of doing your exercises, even if it's five minutes a day, which you're gonna experience, or an hour a day, right. it's a game changer once that's done. Especially when you're saying, I want my lymph to move, even if you're making a selfish decision like I do every day, and it's okay to be selfish. It's okay to it's be selfish, It's about me guys. right now. Yes, it is. Yeah, so you wake up and say, it's about mama. She's gonna take care of herself, uh -huh. and then she can fix the world around her. That's right, mama's not happy, nobody's happy. Yeah, I exactly. I can attest to that. But again, it, it, does, it does stem with the body. You know, I, again, I'm bringing it back to mental, but I used to work with Dr. Richard Granice, and he's a psychiatrist. And he used to hire me to do mindset training for like schizophrenia and multiple personality disorders. And I could not, if, if they were hallucinating, what would I have them do, meditate? They'd lose it, they'd just lose it. So I would have them physically move their bodies to help calm down that central nervous system, which would then calm down the mind. And honestly, there's not much difference between somebody who has a cognitive disability and then somebody who's running their own corporation. They're going crazy all the time because they have so many decisions to make and their body's in that fight or flight mode. Yeah. We gotta get them out of survival mode and into thriving in a life that we love. And part of that comes from being able to move the body correctly so that the mind can calm down. Well, it's exactly right. You go from a person who is, uh, well, I've never seen an attention deficit case yep. in a school. Thank you. When the teacher says, get up and move. That's right. And the ADHD stuff is a percentage of what it was before. Yep. Because remember, sitting is the new smoking. That's right. But, but it's not going anywhere. In fact, we're all sitting right now talking to you and time. you're probably sitting listening to this. So it's not going anywhere. So let's train for it. Yeah. No matter if you are the CEO of a multi-billion dollar corporation. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are people who are working with you, below you or with you, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but they're dependent on you being resilient and balanced. Right. And that's what I think you're going to be taking your expertise to them. And I'm sure you've, you've done that multiple I times, getting them out of their head and kind of into their heart a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. And we always say that with our customers. When they walk in, they're like, Brian, listen, I really hope you can help me because I'm you know, I, this and this and this. I said, okay, let me tell you what I just heard. Brian, fix me 
I'm broken. Yeah, no, and then you're they're not like, broken. Well, yeah, oh, and, and they don't need me to fix them. No. How about if I just give you some tools, you adopt a habit of doing them every day, and once it right. becomes seven days, then I have you at that point. Because right. now you have no choice. Your nervous system now starts to respond in a way where everything changes at that point. Absolutely. You know, and it doesn't matter whether you're a multi-billion dollar CEO. I've trained multi-billion dollar CEOs, A-list celebrities, professional athletes, but I've also trained foster kids. Everyone has the same issues. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you're from. It just matters, okay, how are we gonna get this mindset back in alignment so that we can calm down that central nervous system, get into thriving mode, and living a life that we love. You know, and I always tell people, if you're gonna tell a story about, about your life, you gotta make it a good one, because whatever you say goes. You are the determining factor on whether your life is gonna work or not. So now I wanna talk about chewing your food. You know, um, I am the worst at this, because I am always on the go. I always have like a little bit of bacon, you know, that turkey bacon, I just, oh, yeah. I'm just walking down the street. Just chewing. <laughs> she's that, <laughs> she's that, that woman walking down eating bacon and everybody's going like this, I can't stand her. Because <laughs> they secretly want to eat bacon. Well, it's turkey bacon. Oh. But you know, you, we should sit down, we need to chew. I just did a post that says, uh, don't attack your food, chew it, savor it, become friends with it. You know, I, was, I remember I was eating at a client's house and she goes, Kim, stay a while, put the fork down. Ah. <laughs> she goes, make friends with your food. And I never forgot that. And so that's it's, everybody. It's everybody. But they did the study and they had two groups, one where they had people chew their food 21 times and one when they didn't. And the group that did, they lost 11 pounds. They had better digestion and better overall health. And I know that you're a, a pro advocate on chewing your food. Tell me more about that. Well, the cool part is, is that um, being the old man, I get to take some of my younger therapists out on the road and, okay. and kind of mentor them and teach them and learn off of them too because I, I have to learn from a millennial population where I have no clue how to talk yep. to them sometimes, right? Yep. So ideally, I use this as my little Petri dish. Well, I'm with one of my therapists who's a power lifter. He's doing 600 pound squats and doing all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. when he went to college, he wrestled at the, what is it, the 285 pound weight class, mm -hmm. but he weighed wow. 235, 240, 250 at the most. Wow. So his coach was, eat anything you can, get it into your system. Well, now he's four years out of school. I'm sitting at a barbecue place during the paleo convention down in, uh, <laughs> in Austin, Texas, and we had this amazing brisket in front of us mm -hmm. because you know that I'm vegetarian. You are? Because, yeah. well, wait a second. On your Instagram post, I see all these grass-fed beefs and bulletproof coffee. That's true, because I allow the cow to eat the grass, and I eat the cow. <laughs> so essentially, that is, that's me being vegetarian, so let's just be honest. So that's funny. <laughs> that's a perfect segue into that joke. <laughs> God, that works so well. So this guy sitting down in front of me, I, I sit down with these two slabs of brisket and mm -hmm. I sat down to get ready mm -hmm. and I watch him, he's already halfway done and by the time I got my second <laughs> bite in, he was done. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'm gonna have to change this. Because instantly what happens to him is I ate so fast, mm -hmm. the, the food is rich enough and then guess what comes next? He goes, where's the bathroom? <laughs> he gets that and I'm sure many people can do this, what they eat. It? they have to go to the restroom. Number two? It's coming. Oh, and it's not why? asking, it's telling. Yeah. It's coming okay. because their intestine is getting hit with so much at once that it becomes a reactive wow. situation. Okay, and he's always that. hungry because he never created that 20 minute satiary complex reaction where you're going, yep. I ate and my body got used to it. Put the fork down, stay a while, right? Right. right. So the next meal, I purposely went back to the same barbecue the next day. Right. And I got him something different. I said, well, you're gonna try this today. I said, now listen to me. Cut it, bite it 35 times before you swallow. Wow. And I'm telling you, it was like hurting cats. It was impossible. <laughs> he, was, he was chewing, 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 chewing. He had the fork in his hand. I said, put the fork down. He brought the fork, I put the fork down. And he said, this is the <laughs> hardest thing to do. Now he had two slabs. It is hard, I'm telling you. When, you have, when you're on a time crunch, you're like, dude, I have 20 minutes to get from there, here to there. And I gotta eat too. 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> let's eat for 20 minutes, not let's eat for five minutes yeah. and travel for 15. Yeah, let's, let's eat it in the car, but so, we can chew the food. Yeah, my Bulletproof okay. driving up here was a 45, 50 minute drive. Okay. It literally takes me 90 minutes to finish 16 ounces of my Bulletproof coffee. Seriously. That is my breakfast until I'll have lunch around 2 p.m. Well, and ideally what it's done for me, yeah. it, it saves it's my true. brain. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm addicted from a, hey, I can finally read a book standpoint. My yeah. brain fog is gone, yeah. which was massive for yeah. me. Secondly, this kid went from eating this, 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 and he puts the fork down in between. Remember, two slabs now. Yep. 
he finished one and said, you know what the amazing thing is? This food is amazing, but it's so rich. And I don't want to eat the second one. Wow. So it's, it's amazing. So true. Eating less. Yeah. And the kid is, you know, a little bit bloated in the sense, not, not like bloated in a bad way. He's just that, he's that power lifter build versus right. a bodybuilder build. Right. And so I took him through some workouts after that. And I said, you know, it's okay to do more than three reps every once in a while yeah. and not destroy your joints. Now, luckily he's been doing the tower and a goscue since he came into one of our clinics, literally saved his life as a power lifter. Now he's back to squatting. He's eating so much healthier. And he said, you know what the interesting part is when I go to dinner, I'm not finished before everything else, everybody else, and right. then grabbing off their plate. I'm finishing with them, and I felt like I was part of the family, part of the... And if you look so at true. indigenous societies out in the world that they say are the most healthy and live the longest and are the healthiest out of all of them, it comes down to dinner with family, yeah. and they're in no rush. Yeah. So I, it's time to slow down. Well, you know what? Dinner is slow. Oh, good. During the day, because I'm in between clients. I, got, I have five minutes in yep. between each client. I've got to take them. And then, you know, the whole mother thing, get up, go, carpool, whatever it is. But you know what? It's true. The thing is, is I could, I could sit in the car and eat something. And I know it's not the most ideal, but I could chew it. I could chew it 35 times. I have no chew. problem with my customer saying, do you have any extra for that? Why are you eating in front of me? Yeah. I'll say, well, okay, A, don't be offended because if I don't fuel this machine, exactly then it. this doesn't think, and, and then I'm you not get a, be there for you. yes, you get a low mm -hmm. quality product. Yep. And now because it's all about them in that mm -hmm. moment, they're going them. like this, eat what you want, take your time, I don't care while I'm laying on my back, allowing my thoracic spine to settle down, yep. my back pain will be taken care of because, you, Brian, you're resonating at another level exactly versus it. my blood sugar levels are just crashed at that point. That's exactly it. And my blood sugar levels do crash all the time. I'm not gonna even lie. You know, it's really interesting because I'll be with a client, I have to have bars with me because my blood sugar will crash just like this. Um, I get low, low blood pressure, all of that. I never, ever, 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 ever get it anymore. I love it, but you used to. I used to. Good. Until, I, lo I love that you, until you, 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 chew, you chewed your food. And, <laughs> and I put a high quality fat in my body right away in the now, morning. That is exactly now that was it. massive. So I'm gonna talk to you, we also posted about uh, coconut oil. Yep how it's one of the best things because you know it's really interesting because um, I could if a client a lot of talk, clients will come to me and they feel dizzy when they're working out when they first start I go you know what let's have a teaspoon of coconut oil they go what about sugar or protein no I want you to have coconut oil because again fat is an emulsifier so it draws in the nutrients and helps you be able to digest the different foods but also draw in the nutrients so that you have more so yes fat is so important the, the, the key with that is that it's got to be a high quality MCT oil. Yeah. So listen, I found a lot of them on the market that mm -hmm. are rancid, you know, they're studied. And yep. So I just go with what I find to be the cleanest and mm -hmm. where they pull even more um, um, acids and stuff out of the coconut itself. Yep. Secondly, I'm not afraid of butter. I'm not afraid of butter. It has to be grass fed. That's right. right. If you get a, a yeah. grass fed butter and if you don't want the butter, you get the ghee that's a grass fed ghee. Love it. And I'm telling you, you can use that on say, let's say you buy one of these you have to have a piece of bread in the morning. You're saying, I just need some sustenance. I, I have to have it. Right. Okay, have it. Buy a quality bread, whatever you want. Right. But if you eat that bread by itself, you're in trouble. You're in a lot if of trouble. If you toast it and put on a tablespoon of grass-fed butter, even more, and then maybe even some avocado on top of it, because now you have omega-3s and omega-6 mixing together. Love it. And listen, I'm in a realm where I know just enough to be dangerous as it relates to nutrition, so well, I'll let that up to you, well, but it's amazing. Well, here's the thing. Th think about your protein molecules, right? They're like this. And so if you have olive oil, we just did a video on this actually. So if you have your protein molecules, they're like this. If you have olive oil, it's gonna continue. But if you have that saturated fat, it's gonna harden around those protein molecules. When you're doing that, that helps you burn fat longer and cleaner and it lasts a long time. Yeah. So it's really important to be able to have some saturated fats. Fat is not the enemy, people. It's how much you eat. So if you're having a teaspoon of grass-fed ghee or a little bit of coconut oil, I tend to find that those two are the best I haven't found anything else. Some people say avocado, that doesn't work for my, my, my blood sugars and my hormone levels. It doesn't work for me. It's However, actually, it could be, remember, we love avocado yeah. because everybody loves avocado, yeah. but the idea is it, too much of it, they talk about, the omega-6s can actually feed the inflammatory, That's exactly which it. chicken does the same thing. Chicken is an omega-3. Yes. When you look at which one did we, well, I'm in, my, I'm in an age group where everybody said red meat's bad, chicken's healthy. Right. Well forget about the cleanliness of chicken and all that stuff, that's up to you guys. Right. But if you look at it and say a grass-fed, grass-finished 
is even healthier. If you yep. can find a grass finished piece of red meat, it's 25 bucks a pound. And I know that's a lot, for example. Yes. But if you cut it into fours, it's six dollars per meal. Yep. Now we're wasting money on a Starbucks coffee that's six or seven or eight dollars. Yep. It's doing nothing but increase our our blood sugar reaction and our pancreatic reaction, which is why in the morning, if you can add fat into your system in the morning, just try it out with her guidance, you will start seeing that your hormone release mm -hmm. changes. Yes. And by the way, you mix that with an ice cold shower every day for three minutes. I love that. That is a game changer. So I love that cryo, the cryotherapy, cold. Just get in the get in the water, super cold water. It's kind of uncomfortable, but it just wakes up everything. Look at the Wim Hof stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep, just I love him. Do some of the breathing yeah. right before the shower. So I'm standing in the shower and I'm looking at, and I'm looking well, at the water really going, quick, it's gonna be cold. Explain who Wim Hof is. Okay, so Wim is a, <laughs> he's this crazy dude from Europe <laughs> who uh, yep. basically, can hike any mountain he wants in a pair of shorts and a pair of boots <laughs> or even and literally gets he, he, he breathes himself and has his metabolic system to a point where he doesn't get cold right. and all the researchers at NAS national institutes of health in different countries are now measuring him as a scientific experience mm -hmm. and then he's also bringing in six seven ten people saying I'm gonna give you we're gonna get these ten people within a week to have the same response so this isn't just about him going right. you're a freak it's right. no watch what we can duplicate and it's a, it's a breathing method that's very interesting. I was introduced to him because I'm standing backstage at a Tony Robbins event getting ready to go on, mm -hmm. and here comes this bearded guy, he goes up on stage, and I'm like, okay, who's the hippie? <laughs> like, why are they putting this hippie on stage? <laughs> We're at an event. Hippie. And then you hear him talk, you hear him take the people through the breathing, you hear him see. And then I started watching videos and yeah. we're actually planning a trip now. There's six of us that are gonna go over and do a week's worth of training with them. Oh. It's gonna be very, cause I don't like cold, uh -uh. but I now I'm at a point where I don't like hot showers anymore. Well, I can get to the, I like the cryo in three minutes, I'm done. Cold showers I'm, uh, every once in a while, but I need a hot shower at the end of the day, but a cold shower. Beginning the of the day. Yeah. It's actually been tied scientifically mm -hmm. to up to nine pounds of weight loss fat loss just from taking a cold shower. Love it. Hey, let's morning. try it. Let's all do it for 30 days. Why not? Comment in the, in the in below, right? And let me know your results. Yeah, let's just try it for 365 days. <laughs> okay, what's this 30 days? I tell you, wait, wait, let's just try it one day at a time. That's true. Just today. That's true. For 365 days. Because, you know, a lot of times people think, you know, how am I going to eat this elephant? One little bite at a time. Yep. And chew it 35 times. <laughs> You have funny. to chew it. I'm, I'm having the time of my life, right? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna talk about the lymphatic system now. You know, I'll train my clients. I tend to like to get them open and turned on and, and not in the way that you're thinking. Okay, so get your mind out of the gutter. Hashtag. Uh, hashtag turned on. But also, I wanna get that central nervous system to calm down so the body turns on. So what happens is, is when the body is in survival mode, it uh, tends to shut your immune system off, your cognitive, your muscles turn off, your, your cognitive turns off. So what happens is now you're gonna try and go work out, you can't even hold my arm up. How are you gonna work out for an hour? So we gotta calm down that central nervous system and what I do is I lay them on the ground and I open their arm up. Part of what this is happening is, is the brain is sending a message to the body saying I must be safe. I would not be laying like this if a saber tooth tiger were chasing me down the street. So I like to get them open, calm down the central nervous system, and I like to rub all in this particular areas for women. Oh God, help you guys, I love you. You let me get right underneath your chest tissue right in here, and I literally will just, it's, it's like a high-pitched pain. It's kind of painful, but it helps move that lymphatic system, that fluid out, and then I get it open. And a lot of times people have neck issues, and it's all stemming from that closed off chest from sitting for long periods of time. Absolutely. So what I, want, what I like to do is I like to get it open, I'll rub this here, all this particular area here, because then it helps get that shoulder open to help with that range of motion. Wouldn't it be interesting if you didn't have to do that every appointment, have to do it. Yeah. You didn't have to move them from here to here. So for example, I'm sitting here like this, yeah. I'm the posture guy, yeah. and I'm sitting here listening to you like this, or I'm watching a four hour movie in a movie theater sitting right. back like this, and I'm not gonna try to sit up straight, I'm gonna be relaxed. That's exactly well, in it. this position, my body is resilient enough to come back to the correct position right. because it doesn't have to think about it. Remember, last night I trained for today because we're going to be sitting for That's a while. That's exactly it. So if we can say the body opening up from, from the collarbone, if everybody can take their hands and just put it on their collarbone Do it now. and then go right above it and think from there up to the head, there's one third of your lymph nodes in your body are from here up this triangle. Mm. So if you can think what she was doing, she was opening you up, making you more vulnerable. That's very positive, male or female, it's massive. Mm -hmm and then breathe your way into it. Mm -hmm. 
and we call it east-west breathing versus north-south. So if I everybody, love that. we go north-south, we can never get that full breath. But if you can get that diaphragm, which is shaped like an umbrella, and get it to contract downward like a reverse umbrella, it sucks more air into the lungs. Well, here's with a, the diaphragm. Sit like breathing. this once. Put your okay. knees together. Love it. Now lay your chest on your knee like okay. this. Stay right there. Okay. Now, if I have her back here that by tickles. the kidneys, all right? So I have my <laughs> hand back by the kidney and say, now your stomach can't escape forward. Right. I want you to breathe into my hand back here. I love that. Good. And what's happening is, keep, give me three of those. It's pushing out as she breathes in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, and then breathe it out. So instead of the stomach just escaping forward, they're actually breathing into their back. And love with 22,000 breaths on average per day, oh my gosh, that's a lot. You breathe into your back, you could literally breathe yourself out of back pain. So when a person laying on their stomach, right. the stomach can't just escape forward because the floor is pushing back. Breathe into your back, which is what we call east-west back breathing. I love that. It's amazing. So what, one of the things that I want to know about, because I know you're a you're beautiful expert on this. Now, a lot of times people are stressed out. They're in this fast-paced life. So these muscles literally wrap around the lungs yes. and you can't breathe because these muscles are so tight. How do we get these muscles to be able, because I'm literally just rubbing them out when I'm, working at, when I'm working with people to force them to relax so that they can get their breath. What else can they do in order to keep that on a daily basis? That's a great call. And especially knowing that one third of the lymph is from the right. collarbone up. Why don't we move on to three exercises for the Love shoulder it. that would automatically create a different tension. And here's how you can experiment with it. Right. Take your next customer, five of them that you're working with. Right. Palpate them and go, wow, that's really tight. Take them through these three exercises, mm -hmm. then palpate them again. Okay. And the findings will tell you how important shoulder blade and, and your upper back curvature being, instead of being bent over here, if we made a two millimeter shift to get these vertebrae to go, oh wait, you don't want me bent over like grandma was, right. you want me here. But I don't want you to think, in, Brian wants me to sit up like this because it comes from here. The pelvis is the mechanism to hold the spine and that's what we're gonna go through right now. Love it, let's do it. Okay. Okay, come on. Okay, so you're gonna show me some exercises. Yeah, let's get rid of the shoes. So out there, okay. kick your shoes off. Give them a toss. All okay. right, now that you're barefoot, I yes. just want you to find what you call a comfortable stance. Okay. Anywhere you want your feet, you put them. And now just close your eyes. And now think about where your body weight is from left to right. Which foot is carrying most of your body weight? It could be even or it could be uneven. Is it 60, 40, 70, 30? I better recheck my math. I think they're supposed to equal 100. Do you know, I feel even, but my left foot feels bigger than my right foot. So in my imagination, my left foot is big and my right foot is small. Okay, well, I don't know look, what that, that means. I don't know either, but that's your understanding. So by the time we're done, that's what we'll go back to and say, does, do the feet feel more even when we're you finished? Know what? I find that my left foot is stronger than my right foot. Okay, and now how about from front to back with your eyes closed? Okay, you have more closed. weight in the balls of your feet, more weight in the heels. Is it even on one foot? It's in the center. What, where it's are in they? It's in the middle on both sides. Evenly. Yes, a little bit more out to the, to the sides. Okay. And um, I'm a huge fan of um, your foot fetish this little, this little <laughs> bump that's right there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that little formation of a bunion. So when you can, when you can feel on the inside of your big toe that there's mm -hmm. a little joint that's kind of becoming larger and larger and larger, and yep. the big toe's starting to go that direction. Okay, got it. It's because it's a protection mechanism. So I should have a t-shirt that says, I love bunions okay. because bunions to me from an, an evaluation standpoint, tell me that your foot is not going center of the heel, center of the forefoot, okay. and then center of all five toes. In fact, what you're doing instead is you're hitting on the outside, which you just said, I'm uh -huh. kind of on the outside, kind of on the outside. but if you're going on the outside, the body's going to react and do what? It's going to turn the foot and then go inside and push right off the bunion site. Right, like that. Yeah, you're going to kind of yeah. turn it out a little bit and then you're going to roll. A lot of my clients roll. have that too, where they're just constantly doing that so they have knee issues and things like that. That's I correct. I have them grip the floor to help raise those arches. So but now pay attention, arches. yeah, pay attention okay. to what we talked about before, changing shoulder position, opening up the upper body lymph channels, mm -hmm. at the same time turning the hip on, waking up the psoas, the on switch, and that's going to affect where you're loading and your feet it. are. Can I say one thing too? Please. You know, the body, a lot of times people are saying, my body's freaking out, my body's doing this wrong, my body's doing that wrong. The body is not your enemy. Your body is trying to help you. It just doesn't know how because we're constantly putting loads on different weights. We're sitting for long periods of time, like Brian had mentioned. So remember, give the body a break. It's trying to help you. Now we're going to help you talk and communicate to the body in a way that it understands so it serves you rather than not. So when somebody comes in and says, look at my pictures, yeah. my body's off, or when I close my eyes, I'm on one side versus the other. 
kill all judgment instantly. All judgment. And instead say this, what's my body trying to tell me? And I'm curious, and curiosity leads to an answer somewhere down the road. Mm -hmm. You're at least, hmm, okay, you're confused and you're curious. Those are great mixtures of two words right. that it's going to lead to a solution down the road. And what we're going to do is we're going to run you through three exercises that will take you less than three minutes. You go at your own pace. Yep. You're not in competition. And on day one, it's going to be, ah, oh, I feel like my body's working. On day 30, you're going to go through it and go, this is nothing. My body's already progressed to the next level. That's exactly it. Okay, Good. so let's Love get it. your feet okay. pointed straight ahead. And straight the ahead. new straight ahead is like five degrees slightly pigeon-toed. Okay. Because we're looking at the outside edge now instead love, of here. Oh, I love that. So let's that. use this. That's, That's straight. So good, okay. Okay, now in that position, mm -hmm. because that now aligns your ankle to your knee to your hip joint. That's and right. when we say, get your feet hip width, if your hips are out here, mm -hmm. you think, well, this is hip width. Yeah. No, that's just where you're carrying some extra emotion. So what we're gonna do, <laughs> we're going to, uh, we're gonna fix love that in a guy. second here. Okay. So now put your hand in this position, make a fist where you're like that, okay. and now just open it up to put your fingertips right against that. Okay. So that love stiffens it. out these tendons, mm -hmm. drop it to your side, okay. hand over here doing the same thing. Okay. When I say pull your shoulder blades together, there's two ways to do this. There's one where you just slide your shoulder blades together down and back, mm -hmm. or the second way would be where you kind of lean back and arch like that. I don't want the second one. Okay. So if you feel like your whole breastbone is kind of coming up, that's a, a weird movement. Just okay. slide your shoulder blades together. Okay, squeeze your angel wings, everyone. Yep, down and back and bring okay. your arms out to the side. Up. Now in that position, you should have tension right here. Yep. And now circle forward, up and forward 40 times and keep those hands from coming forward. Keep it out to your side directly. Now, when do you suggest, because I think that they should do it before their workouts because there's, you know, they've got to get their workouts done. You want to make sure that you're in alignment, your posture is beautiful so that you, when you are lifting the weights that your body is moving in the right way. Keep those elbows locked out. Love it. Did you lose count? Yeah. Start over. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, no! give, me, give me 10 more, 10 more, 10 more. <laughs> Nine, keep eight. the tension here. So I never keep count. My clients hate me for it. That's okay. They, okay here we go. They, I love the idea of drop your arms. What if, okay. we, what if we got rid of the clocks and the counts and we Thank said, you. What if you do just enough that your instincts say I've had enough? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that I say I go by the color of your face and the way that it's. That yeah, it's, when you pass out, we've done enough. <laughs> we did enough. Okay, so same thing with your hand position. Okay. Now bring it up and now go palms up back toward me. Love Elbow that. straight and circle up and back 40 times. We'll, we'll take a guesstimate on count. But as <laughs> what you were talking about before, which was, you know, should we do this before a workout or after a workout? especially if somebody's coming from the office and they've been stressed or they've been successful or whatever it might be throughout the day, they've mixed it with a lot of sitting. If you look at her body, and I'll have her turn sideways in a second, I want you to see how the body's moving back and forth. This is actually, you think it's a shoulder exercise, because where do you it's feel not, it? It's not, it's in my shoulders, in my rear uh, front delts. But okay, now you know turn what? sideways. Get your feet straight. But I do feel like it's everywhere. Go, Because my Speed whole body is moving. Not that fast, right there. But look how the whole body is moving or oscillating in this way. This little perturbance that's going on up here has a downward spiral effect into the abdominal wall, the deep hip flexors, the glutes. And because we're not going any wider than fist width, drop your arms, we're not going any wider than fist width at your, at your toes, your hip is now trapped. So now face the camera again, get your feet pointed what you call slightly five degrees in. Yep, good. Okay. Put your hands in that same position <clears throat> and put it against your temple like this. Okay, right here? Yep, just like that. Okay. Now close your elbows together. Okay, if I can. And they'll try to touch them behind you. Oh, that's not happening. I understand that. That would be bad. That would mean you dislocated your shoulder. <laughs> so just try to. Okay, so here we go. We're okay. going to go together. Together. And then and back. Then back. And then together. And then together. And back. And, and back. what's really happening is the shoulder blade, as she I moves her arm forward, exercise. is gliding back and forth. And that means that the upper back, that spinal column that's a little bit rounded over from being stressed or sitting too long or, you know, genetically you're thinking, okay, I'm turning into my mom or my grandma, I'm starting to bend, uh, bend over like this. Mm -hmm. We're reversing this spinal curve and it's having a downward effect because we have it trapped with the feet straight. Yeah. So five degrees turned in, fist width apart. It's the most important thing in these two exercises. Mm -hmm. I love this. Keep that hand like this, okay. nice and stiff, yep. Let that knuckle roll. Keep going. Give right. me about 15 more. Okay. Yep. These are surprisingly very hard. They're hard because a lot of people, when they, when they move, anytime you move this arm up above, your shoulder blade should be moving with you. Almost a two-to-one mm -hmm. relationship. So mm -hmm. well, if I move this to 130 degrees, right. this has to move at that two-to-one relationship. Yep. 
I did pass math class. So the ideal situation is that when you, if you're stuck, I get a lot of people get right to here and they're going, I can't close it. Right. You can't close it yet. So if this is hard to do, remember this is only day one. You'll be at day 30 pretty soon and it's going to be nothing and, and you're, you'll remember back to the day when you couldn't do it. But never do these with your feet turned out because that's an air leak to your hip, meaning we're turning the hip off and all movement generates from here if you really want to be efficient at it. Okay, drop your arms, okay. interlace your hands together, mm -hmm. push your palms away like this mm -hmm. and take it straight over your head. If I can. Oh my gosh, right that there. totally opened it up. Yep, and look just drop your shoulders mm -hmm. and slightly look up at your hands okay. and hold that with your elbows straight. So that should feel like it's easier or you were, you were probably expecting it to be tighter. I thought it was going to be a lot tighter yeah. and that just opened up like you wouldn't believe. I love it, Brian. So now because of that, the cool part of that, let's say she was my customer and I'm working with her, I allow that reaction I don't allow it to just disappear. We're going to sit on that reaction for a while That's and go, right. do you realize that you created this, not me? This is you creating that That's moment right. of bliss or, ah, oh, wow, I, my body's so amazing. It's naturally coming out of where it was before. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. I do this when I have my coffee sitting in the press in the morning. Four minutes, I set the timer and I go through these three exercises and then the fourth one, which we're going to go to in a second. Okay. Okay, drop your arms. Okay. Now just relax. Put your feet back to where they would be normally positioned. Mm -hmm. And I'll just close your eyes and think about your body weight left to right. What does that difference it's in your foot feel like? It's so much better. Like, so the I'm left on one my, being bigger? No, they're even. Good. Yeah. And I feel I'm more on my heels, but more centered. Like I feel, I feel centered. 50-50. Yeah. Yeah, that's better than being on the balls of your feet yeah. all the time. Because look, if you went to the balls of your feet all day long, that whole posterior chain yeah. becomes locked up and tight. And then you start realizing that these back muscles, which wrap around basically to the tip of your forehead, wow. this whole fascial system becomes its own thing. And then we think, well, I got to roll every day. I got to use the roller. I got to use the roller. Instead mm -hmm. of saying, why do I need to use the roller every day? Yeah. Why is there no cumulative effect of me using it one day and feeling better the next? Love because it. you're just taking one step forward and seven steps back because your daily lifestyle is interrupting that. Yep, I love that. Okay. Okay. So now we want to go through the uh, Why are you what I call the, at me? the. No, I'm not laughing at you. I'm going to laugh at them because the greatest abdominal exercise ever is coming, and it's going oh, to be. Oh, got it. Okay. Some of the best 30 seconds of your life. So <laughs> this will be amazing. So okay. we've done this with one person or 15,000 in an event, and this is a game changer. So okay. let's get you in a kind of a sprint position with your, mm -hmm. your one foot forward is, is uh, pointed straight ahead, okay. your back foot slightly turned out, mm -hmm. and up on the ball of your foot a little bit, okay. as if you were gonna sprint forward. But you're not gonna leave. So remember, you're gonna go cheek, cheek. to cheek. So cheek. cheek to cheek, and that 90 degree angle, so from the side, we're doing this, not this, you're not opening up that arm. So you're doing just that motion okay. right there and you're gonna do this for 30 seconds. Are you ready? Okay, ready? I don't know, are you guys ready? Let's do it. Let's as do fast it as we can. And when ready? you think you're not going fast enough, start speeding up. Just okay, here, we go. here we go. Ready, go. Faster, faster. Another gear, come on. You got 30 seconds. Come on, breathe. Come on. I'm now keep going, you. keep going. <laughs> the great thing is I get to coach. The cool part, if you can I see this on camera, coaching, by the way. <laughs> when, when she's moving her arms, look at her pelvis making this movement. So everything comes down to oh, this deep ball. abdominal group doing the work. Give me five more seconds. Four more seconds. Three and a half more These seconds. These are damn long seconds, Two seconds, Brian. Okay, take a break. Love it. High fives. Oh, two. Yeah, but you got to do the other leg. I'm so going to do it. Okay, here we go. Let's put the other leg. I love you it. You guys should be having fun with this. Other leg is back, you're up on the ball of your foot. Okay. Cheek to cheek, go, 30 seconds. And again, turn this on, pump the arms. When you think you're going fast enough, add another gear to it. Get yourself in front of a mirror. Imagine doing this for sets. You did 30 seconds on, 30 seconds on the other leg, one minute break, or even do some of those exercises in between that we did prior to this. So we wanna talk about the growth hormone increase. We're gonna talk about it after this. Well, I just want to hear you talk after this with the, the way you're going to be breathing. Okay, if take a break talk. for a second. I don't know if I can talk. Okay, here we go. But if that's all they did, and we didn't ask them to do more sets, if Four that's minutes. all we did right there, yeah. their entire day is going to be different physiologically. I love it. Four minutes to a new you every single day. Okay, so now what we're going to do is Brian's going to show me some exercises, but I also want to lead into the growth hormone release. Now, a lot of times, uh, women who are pre post menopause or during menopause, they start to gain weight around the middle. They tend to um, not be able to lose the weight. And their hips start to get a little narrow. They start to lose their butt. Again, that waist starts to widen. 
So Brian and I were talking about during the break about high intensity versus low intensity. Now I have a video that I've created. It's 12 minutes long. You do three minutes of high intensity cardio and then one minute of rest, three minutes with up to 12 minutes. Now, Brian was talking about a low intensity to where you can get your heart rate up and make sure that your body is staying in alignment so that you can get your heart rate up for those three minutes and then rest for that minute. Because what that's going to do is it's going to produce more growth hormone. And let me tell you, after menopause, when you start to go through menopause, the growth hormone decreases. That's why you're not able to lose a lot of weight. So he's going to show me some exercises of what we can do to so show you so that you can do this first thing in the morning as soon as you get up, first thing in the morning, and no coffee, nothing, just plain. Let's get started. So everybody in, has done, you know, at some point, especially if they've been to other trainers and gyms and things like that. Right. And so when our athletes come to us, they're usually, they, they've been injured. We get them into the posture correction, mm -hmm. but now the pain symptoms are gone because right. they're more balanced, which is what you experience during those three exercises, your foot strike balanced out. Then we have the posture conditioning. So I'm gonna take you through a version of what we call Igoscu's version of the bear crawl, because everybody and their mother is doing bear crawl to yep. train their core, but I'm not training, by definition, your abdominal wall and your back wall, we're training your deep hip musculature because that's where your lymph channel has to open up. And all of a sudden, hey, my okay. pants were a, I was wearing a, a 14, now I'm in a 10, two days later, I know I didn't lose weight, what's happened? Right. Your body's moving that toxic buildup throughout the system. And by the way, it drains upward. And remember, these are the channels that come into your different veins and things like that to drop into your heart. That's how the lymph system works. I love it. And then Brian and I were doing this on the break and I asked him, you know, what about if you have shoulder issues? Now he's gonna be talking about how you can do this and it's actually gonna help your shoulders. It's gonna help your body because it's a hip driven exercise as opposed to a upper body exercise. Correct. Okay, here we go. So put yourselves in say a, a, a what they call quadruped, like cat and dog position. Okay. Okay, so right now, shoulders are basically right above the wrist. This is right above the knees. Mm -hmm. And now move your hands forward, say about one hand length, because I wanna keep you long. Okay. Now go up into a bent knee, okay. downward dog. Like this? So, yeah, just like, like that. Or like this. So that would be the bent knee downward dog. Now yes. most people when they're gonna do bear crawls are gonna come out here like this and bend your arms in a little bit. Yeah. They're gonna be in that position where all the yeah. load's on your shoulder now. Yeah, that's in my neck too. Correct, so get the weight off of that. Uh, Let it okay. sink back into here. That's mm -hmm. gonna be your protection mechanism against your shoulders. Okay. So we're gonna use two words here. I don't want you pushing right. into this. I want you almost feeling like back here, you're pulling into this. I can feel it. And that's the difference. If somebody in yoga were teaching a class and they could get rid of the push, 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 turn it into pull, we'd be doing yoga the way that it was meant to be taught. Mm -hmm. So just holding this position is metabolically high enough right now because I guarantee yes. you she's feeling this. I am definitely feeling it. I am shaking. It's okay, so now working. hold that and just take a large, keep your weight on your left leg, mm -hmm. keep it bent, mm -hmm. reach your right leg straight out to the right. Mm -hmm. So now she's straight on this leg, her weight's on the left leg, hold that for about three seconds, then start walking your hands over toward your right leg, let this, no, not back, <laughs> let's go sideways to me over here, don't be cheating. Wait, wait, which way? This direction, oh, that way. yep. <laughs> let this okay. knee bent, let okay. this knee bend let a little bit, bent. let okay. that one, yeah, keep that one straight now, now your weight's on your right leg, Hold that for three seconds. I love it. And now bring that left leg back into the bent knee downward dog position. Reset, pelvis up. And now take a big step out to your left. Hold for three seconds, all the weights over here. Start walking your hands over. Load up the left hip. Three, two, one. Bring the right leg in. I love this. Hold that, reset that downward dog, pull it back. And now reach out to me. You're only gonna do one more. So reach over, that's three, Three, Sorry. two, one, walk it over to your right leg to load for three seconds. Sink back into that bent knee downward dog on one, two, three seconds, bring it in, and then whatever goes right has to go left to finish out. Reach over to your left. Walk your hands over. Tailbone up, yep. Now bring the right leg in and stand up. Wow. What's it done to your breathing? What's it done to your body? I'm in a total alignment. Well, and, and you talk about people going, I need to breathe heavier or else I'm not working. Right. If they would do this and go for a 15 minute walk, yeah. their body's gonna be so much more resilient because they're getting a natural heel strike, mid foot strike, toe off, which means their lymph system now is pumping. And I promise you, you won't have to go out and buy Lulu pants for $200 to look better. <laughs> It'll actually be your body looking You're better on its own. Language. I love Lulu's, <laughs> they're, they're so good. They're so good. I like Lauren and Jane too. There we go. All right. 
All right, beautiful, I love it. So a lot of times people come to me with chronic pain and they say, Kim, can I work with you? And I say, absolutely. You know, it takes a minute to kind of get, you know, it's not a quick fix. This is not gonna happen overnight, but short daily bursts, you know, and people say, do you think you can help me? And I say, absolutely. When it comes to my specialties, emotional fitness, mental focus, physical training, I can say next to Brian, I feel like we're some of the best that can coach you. But a lot of times people come to me in their chronic pain and they're kind of pissed off. Now let's talk about that because yeah. it's really, they're irritated all yeah. of the time. You have so customers like that? I have irritated CEOs all the time. And you know, their wives are saying, please do something to help. If my, I'm gonna, my marriage is suffering right now. This guy is such a jerk. But you know, you have to understand when you are in chronic pain, you're gonna be an asshole. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm not gonna even yep. lie. So and tell nerve me about pain, that. you know, when, if somebody's ever had, and those of you who, who've had this, upper back nerve pain to your arm, uh, sciatic pain down your leg, femoral nerve pain into the front of your leg, probably one of the worst. Yeah. And for men especially who come in and say, I, I gotta tell you, I get these shooters into my testicles and yep. there's nothing worse from another man to hear that you just go, oh my God, that's not, that's not good. So we feel for you right away. Right away. And nerve pain changes them on the emotional end. Well, it's our job to be able to give them a way out of it by saying, what if, the nerve pain was a signal. Yeah. You can't say, hey, your nerve pain is a gift because they're so miserable at this point. Miserable. But in one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, three days, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. they start feeling better right away. Yep. And all of a sudden, that emotional change, the real person shows up. Well, the because chronic pain, especially from autoimmune stuff, yes. that's a massive one. Well, and I know personally about autoimmune disorders, and let me tell you something, I was not a nice person to be around. I feel sorry for my kid, I'm telling you right now. I was in chronic pain all the time. What happens with autoimmune disorders, and I'm just telling you right now, usually it doesn't stem from the food that you're eating. People are saying, I'm just gonna eat this, I'm gonna go gluten-free, th that's great. However, you gotta deal with the emotional issues that are coming up as a result that are contributing Absolutely. to that autoimmune disorder. And usually, I'm sorry to say it, but if you have an autoimmune disorder, usually something tragic happened in childhood or something to snap you out, not feel, put you into survival mode. And a lot of type A individuals, they had to step up when they were a kid when they didn't want to, whether it was parents, whether it was on a team so at school, something happened to force you to want to step up. And so, you know, and a lot of times it does unfortunately come into the abuse category. And so I have to tell you, I'm so passionate about this. You know, tell me, to, I want you to talk about it because I just, I'm so passionate about this next thing that we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So we were talking at, uh, at the UPW and um, Tony always has these things about one of his favorite charities is yes. OUR, so it's Operation Underground Railroad. And when you do your research on Operation Underground Railroad, yes. um, this little thing that we're gonna create together is gonna be a lot of fun because you're gonna be able to contribute and benefit from what Egoscu does and whatever you're gonna put together. But That's I know right. I wanna be able to give something when you're giving something. So right. these people, you, th you think about Navy SEALs, Marines, Air Force Special Forces, uh, whoever's out there, Delta Force, Rangers, they retire and they're never really out of it. They always want to be, oh, I want to go out and save. Yep. They're just givers as it relates to that. Well, OUR has basically put together these teams of people in their retirement mode that said, we are now going to go out and free up these boys, girls, males, females, whatever, whoever's caught up in this sex slavery or slavery around the world. And I know that I was at Business Mastery a couple uh, years ago, and by the way, I got my MBA in five days. It was amazing. <laughs> and I will tell you flat out, there was probably, I think at the last one they had, they raised about $950,000 for wow, this because the people in the crowd were so taken by what, where this money goes and what they're actually doing around the world. And when you start hearing numbers, even in Southern California, we hear about it all the time, a sex slavery ring was busted in Oceanside, California. Right. It's mind blowing to me my house is 10 miles away. Let me tell you something, it's not just overseas. It is happening right oh, here it's in massive. your neighborhood. And you know, I actually had, a, a, you know, I was in foster homes by the time I was 15 years old. But you know, I always feel like life happens for us, not to us. Now I've had probably one of the most tragic pasts that I have ever heard of. I work with a lot of people, but again, life happens for us, not to us. I was able to take that tragedy and help other people and help, you know, I, want, I want to be able to give back, but I used to walk, work with foster children and I used to have to train the, and you know, teach the parents how to learn how to read so they wouldn't sell their kids. Wow. It was pretty intense. So it was kind of challenging to have this kid and work with the kids to you know, teach them, hey, you can do anything you want. You can change the story of your life. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, where you've done, who you've done, right? Doesn't matter. You're not broken. You're not, you're okay. But then to also teach their parents, hey, look, 
this is not okay, and you're okay too, and we can change the story of your life just by teaching you the tools and techniques. But we need to be able to get these kids out of these particular homes. Uh, it's not okay. It's not okay, and we have to do it. So what are you going to be offering yep. as far as... Um, so I'm going to put a challenge out to you. Um, you look up this Operation Underground Railroad. Um, you get the information to Kimberly that you made your donation. And, le and let's, let's look at a donation of... I don't know, you know, hundred dollars or more. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Somebody does hundred dollars or more to something like this, then I'm willing at that point to take you on as a complimentary consultation over Skype or in person. If you come down to San Diego to my Del Mar clinic, whatever, we work in people with over 85 countries right now. So it doesn't really matter where you are. You can make that donation. Um, we'd love more like a hundred's the minimum, but I'd love you to go in and say, here's a hundred thousand because at $2,500, I think per person per individual, you've saved a lot of people. A lot and of people. you'll find a way to write this off, so feel good about it in, in all senses, right? That's exactly so everybody right. needs that write-off, but even if you didn't, the sense of contribution that you're going to do and that you're going to get something from us is going to be massive because we're about giving just like you are when you're giving in a, in a, for a good cause like that. And I'm saying too, like if you donate $100, he'll help you. You can come in and get a free consultation with me as well, so let's do that together. And then also, you know, this money is going to a great cause because they're not just helping the kids and pulling them out, they're giving them life skills. They're teaching them that they start to give them that self-confidence, they give them job security skills to be able to take it into their life so they don't have to resort to their past or what Correct. they know in order to survive. They can get into that surviving and that thriving mode and live the life that they love. Now, I love it. I love it. Brian, thank you so much. And you know what? I have a gift for you. Uh-oh. Okay. Ah, uh, could you go get that for me? I have something for it. So I know that you are an avid, it's not ping pong, it's a table tennis. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> now my friends, they told me that this was a good paddle. What, are you so, kidding? I swear to God, here is a table tennis paddle for you. So wow, you this can is not a joke. everybody's ass. <laughs> America's true sport. <laughs> Now I'm good. I used to have one of these in my, not one of these, but a table in my bedroom, and I used to play it all the time. And I can tell by the form that she's using that she was actually playing ping pong I no. versus <laughs> table tennis. There is a difference. There, there is a difference. Well, thank you so much. Oh, this is awesome. Course. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. Yeah, thank you so much. Love you. You're doing great work. Thank you. You are too. So there you have it. I am Kimberly Liu, and I do hope this video helps you find your freedom within. And remember, it doesn't matter whether it's your mental, emotional, or physical well-being, it is all connected. So let's shift from settle and survive to accelerate and thrive and into a life we love. I love you guys. Mwah. Higher day is going to be different physiologically. I love it. Four minutes to a new you every single day. Woo! Okay. Catch your breath. <laughs> That's the blooper. Love but you it. see what it does. They need more to know and they like chronic book list. Oh, oh, got it. Okay, here we go. We'll okay. shut up. Okay. <laughs> <We're talk> <laughs> shut up and talk. Oh, good. Okay.